Right now, though, and I've been looking forward to this interview because, look, occasionally out there in the wonderful world of citizen journalism on the internet, let's be honest, there's some real rubbish. Uh, I'm sick and tired of citizen journalists who tell me to do my research. And the hundred, well, there are about 10 of them who send me about 100 emails every week. Have you seen this? Do you know the truth about our Anthony Fauci? Um, and it's just rubbish. But then occasionally you come across a piece of citizen journalism that is a gem, a gem. And I think it was last week, someone said, have you checked out this YouTube video by a guy called C. McCoy? And I was sceptical, I'll be honest, I was sceptical. It was half an hour long or 40 minutes long. And I thought, oh, life's too short. But I started watching this thing, and geez, it's good. Because as you know, the Disinformation Project, I think, are one of the most dangerous and shady organisations in this country today. They have become, the Disinformation Project, the go-to experts on hate speech or restriction of free speech for our compliant, government-paid-off mainstream media. Um, and I think they are dangerous. Uh, I have personally, and the platform has collectively been shunned by this taxpayer-funded and associated organisation. They refuse to let us attend their seminars and they refuse absolutely, despite wanting to have healthy debate, they refuse to come on this programme and box their corner or argue their points. I was therefore quite heartened to see a young guy called uh, Charlie McCoy make this documentary on YouTube about them and in particular their public comments on TVNZ and um, TV3 in news media about the parliamentary protest. Um, Charlie's documentary uh, features significant clips from Kate Hanna and he goes through the publicly published research of the Disinformation Project and I'll be honest, I think he rips them a new one with some expertise. Um... I wanted to know more about Charlie. We rang him, we invited him on the program. He joins us now. Charlie, welcome to the platform. Great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Oh, Charlie, you're going to need to talk up. Yeah. You sound like you're a million miles away. Uh, what about now? Oh, that's way better, Charlie. That's oh, like cool. you, you've got a phone. Hey, Charlie, first up, tell us a bit about yourself. Um... Uh... Well, uh, yeah, where do I start with that? Well, I don't know, where you're from, how old you are, what you've studied, what you do right now. Okay, um, I thought just when it was briefly um, mentioned the other week, uh, um, you, you mentioned anxiety issues or something and like that, and it, because I mentioned it, obviously, um, and I can elaborate on that uh, Um so, so I was I was a normal, um, relatively normal, upstanding member of society. I think um, you still are, Charlie. Between... To be honest, just between you and I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I looked the part too. I in a shirt and a tie. I I um, looked a bit different to how I do now. But um, I um, I had some health issues at the end of my twenties, and um, I did. Well, I sort of had to. They got the better of me, and I had to drop out of public life but um what were you doing up uh, to then charlie um, and had you gone to varsity and studied something what was your kind of vocation well, no I'm, I'm i'm uneducated i uh i so i was working at a in, in an office doing um investment administration and kiwi savers and that sort of thing but um, yeah no i'm i hadn't studied no i'm um i'm self-educated all right um, you've got this channel, though, this YouTube channel, and you make a number of documentaries. Can I ask yeah. you what got, what got you interested in the Disinformation Project? And I can say, can I say in a strange way, and I said to you when we, when we talked on the phone the other day, I, I just want to congratulate you for, in a very different way, cutting absolutely to the crux of the issues around the Disinformation Project. What got you interested in making, though, this YouTube um, video about them. I reckon it was in the um, in the backdrop of the anti-mandate people, and so they had a couple of 
protests the previous year, I think, and they were sort of one day long. And then there was the big one that was 24 or whatever days long. And just the way they were treated, I was not one of them. I, I, I didn't go there and I, you know, I, I didn't even know anyone there. But they were treated so, so unfairly, I thought. And, and maybe there was a bit of sympathy there. Just uh, know what it's like to be disenfranchised, perhaps. In my case, maybe it's a bit more by choice than it was for them but yeah I didn't feel um, very very um, happy about how it all went um, from a sort of fairness point of view but then um, that interview on 18 May those those morning interviews they did they do the she, Kate Hanna the head of the disinformation project did one with Matty McLean wasn't it and then one with the AM show with uh, Ryan and Melissa yeah. Jan Green Do Dr. Sanjana Hatatua did one yeah, with the, yeah, Ryan and Melissa, yeah. Um, yeah. On watching that, I, I just thought, uh, he, the, the doctor, he, he really did um, come across as a bit of a character, I reckon. He, he, he seemed to take himself really a bit seriously, it seemed, at the start. And did, did you remember, did, if you, um, for those who didn't see it, he, he made a, a, an earthquake analogy. Oh, yeah, he said it was as fatal or as deadly as the earthquakes. That's right. It was amazing. Yeah, and some of the um, body language from Melissa. So you watched that and you smelt BS just as a human being, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I like then, so what was your approach in then, if you like, dissembling or, or, or trying to figure out what was being said and why it was being said. What was the journalistic approach that you took? Oh, oh Charlie, we've like your audio's dropped down a bit again, mate. Oh no, how are you now? That's better. Yep. My. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. Without without seeking it out particularly online, some other people were talking about him on Twitter saying stuff in, in response to that interview and yes, I didn't go looking for it or anything. Other people were who had his back because, you know, they were saying how dare Ryan Oh, Ryan like said something, yeah, Ryan said something quite snide and quite clever after the interview finished, <laughs> which is one of the joys of being the person in the studio. Um, yeah. And then he came back and said, I'm never going back on that channel again. Charlie, just watch your audio again, mate. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you sound a million miles away, Charlie. Fiddle round with the Any plug. Better now? That's better now, yep. Okay. Yeah, inconvenient. Where was I? All right, so then this guy, the Sri Lankan doctor, has a crack. And you st people start sending you stuff. What was the impression you began to form of the disinformation project and its media pronouncements as you got deeper into this? Well, originally the intent was just to maybe um, have a little bit of fun with it. But then I thought, in all fairness, I needed to read the report, and I did read the report, and it was just so shallow. There's just nothing there. It's... Um, yeah, I um. How's my audio doing now? Hey, audio, you're sounding great, mate. A million dollars. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm. I'm not an academic person, especially, but to read that, to read that report, it was twenty pages or so. It it didn't seem scientific at all. Or I remember you're talking to Price Edwards the other day, and he pointed out that as a group they didn't come across particularly rigorous, or he said something like that, and. Yeah. Well, it's very hard to figure out, Charlie, exactly who they are. They are based physically at universities, but my understanding is they are not associated with the universities they are based at. They are students or PhD students. Universities do not pay their wages. We understand they report to various prime minister's committees, but and they are supported in an ancillary way by the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Enterprise and the Science Communication Group within that ministry. So just who they are, how they get funded and who sets their agenda is really difficult to find out, particularly 
when they steadfastly refuse to expose themselves to genuine journalistic inquiry? I think there was that curious moment some people will have seen when Chantal Baker confronted Kate Hanna um, at some Q&A thing. And one of the questions Chantal said, or she made it, maybe it was a statement, she said, but you are government funded though, or you are public funded though, or something like that. And Kate Hanna goes, you know, like, am I? Like, um, you know, like, huh? yeah, and that, uh, that deflection technique, it's like, what do you make of that? Because if you weren't, you'd think you'd say, no, I'm not, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, well, look, here's another <laughs> possibility. They are funded by a trust... And that trust is funded by someone offshore, maybe in, from Silicon Valley. Well, that would be totally, totally nefarious if that were the case. Well, I'm saying that I'm picking at the moment that is one of the two strongest possibilities. And that this is therefore all part of the Prime Minister's push with Silicon Valley players to have, you know, the Christchurch call and the hunting of people yeah. on the internet for politically incorrect views... This is all part of, of the same project. And the problem is, yeah, um, if that's yeah. not the case, why doesn't Kate Hanna, why doesn't someone from the government front up and say so? Yeah, well, it's <laughs> indeed. Yeah. So, Charlie, what you do, and you say you're uneducated, someone sent me a text says, tell Charlie he's not uneducated, he's self-taught, um, and there's no shame in that. It seems to me the sensibility you applied to having read their report and watched the media coverage was pretty middle of the road Kiwi, you know, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it probably is a duck. What oh, is totally. your yeah. yeah, what is your conclusion at the end of the day as to what the disinformation project, Kate Hanna and the other two involved in it, what it really is and what its purpose is? Um, Oh, watch the audio, Charlie. No, no, I um, I Here was taking a, a moment to. <laughs> okay, I, I um, yeah, I don't know. I, I sort of, I sort of stay away from some opinionating and rather just lay out what um, what is there to see, and uh, maybe better people draw their own conclusions because I don't know. I, I think it looks suspicious as, but I, you know, I've got no conclusive evidence to say that they're up to something um, terribly evil. I think it's more likely that they're just sort of um, um, stupid, not evil, maybe. Gosh, you, uh, you've you got quite a nice view on the world, Charlie. Charlie, can I also point out that you're one of the few people I know that I give the opportunity to express an outrageous or extreme opinion to, and they say, no thanks, that's all right, I'm just going to talk about the facts, and I think that is an admirable thing. Could I ask you, since we put the video up, or, or just in general, what reaction you've had to that video? Oh, well, gee, um, you done gone turn me into half a celebrity, you guys. Um, really? Well, I need to correct, oh, well, uh, well, compared to what I used to be, maybe. Um, yeah, well, yeah, lots, so many nice comments and things, and, and on the platform last week, you guys had some nice things to say too and that was all um, very yeah. uh, flattering. Yeah. Um, I, I need to correct something. I forgot. Um, I was going to do it straight away. Just to be completely transparent, like C. McCoy was initially a pseudonym. Ah. So the Charlie bit is out in the open. That's all true. That's all good. But my last name isn't McCoy. It's um, a slight variation of that. But um, I think branding-wise, it's good to just keep it going because that's... Um, You're uh, the, you know what you should call yourself, Charlie? The real McCoy. Oh, yes, well. The real Charlie McCoy because he's not real. Hey, you've got other work. Uh, I take it because of your anxiety issues that you live, um, you probably don't get out much. And I think you said to me when we talked last week that you spend a lot of time just consuming media and online and seeing what's happening in the world through that medium, right? Yeah, yep. Mm. I'm going to ask you an honest question. Do you think that's entirely healthy or is that just the way the world's worked out for you? Um, well, after I left work, I, I still had a pretty decent work ethic and I, I, um, I could just lay around all day, you know, play video games and I do do that, but after hours... Um, <laughs> I, I don't feel right doing it during the day, though, so I have to do something. And this, and it just, for some reason, um, 
I'm good at retaining knowledge or something when mm. it comes to politics and current affairs and that sort of thing. So that's just that's the, it's the only thing I'm too aware that I'm yeah. that good at, and I yeah go with that. You know what's really sad, Charlie? I think that, and I really am. I I'm, I have huge admiration for what you've done and and the purity with and integrity with which you've done it, which I think signs through and which is why so many people have been impressed with your work. But I have a horrible feeling that our Prime Minister and Kate Hanna would label you an incel and say that your oh, online yeah. content needs to be moderated and that the laws that Kerry Allen wants to pass would impact on your ability to do what you do. Yeah, well, yeah, incel. <laughs> It's, it's not really that type of thing. It's too easy to respond to it because um, you, if you, you you bang your fist down on the table and, and like hand over some references or something and say call these people and you know that, it's not a very classy um, yeah. look. And I think the that's hand, though. I think that's what the disinformation project would try and label someone like you as. And I'm, that's what's I'm wrong. So sure with, they would. And that's what's wrong with them. You know that is what's wrong with them. Have you had any blowback, any negative blowback from groups like the Disinformation Project to the stuff you've done? Um, no, not that I'm aware, aware of. I, I, I sort of keep a bit of a low profile, I suppose, so it's, it's hard for them to find anything to ping me on. Good. Well, Charlie, can I just say, if you do more stuff looking at this, um, at this project, at the Disinformation Project or this issue... And you're putting it up on your YouTube channel. We at the platform are more than happy to give you a uh, a hand along and give you some publicity because I do think um, most often, I'll be honest, Charlie, I'm pretty cynical about people who've done their own research on the internet <laughs> and the citizen journalist. Um, you are certainly the exception to that general rule um, of my oh, well. opinion of, of citizen journalists. Um, oh, are you working you. on anything in particular at the moment? Um, I'm, um, no, I'm just absorbing stuff and eventually every now and then an idea will happen, I suppose, and then I'll be all ready to go because I'll be immersed in yeah. whatever's going on anyway, yeah. yeah. Hey, Charlie, the Batman t-shirt that you were wearing in the video, <laughs> yeah. was that a poke at the Harvard speech by the Prime Minister? Oh, yes, it certainly was. I'm glad someone noticed well, someone just texted me in and they said, love Charlie's Batman T-shirt, taking the mickey out of the Prime Minister's comments. We're going to have to get you a full Batman suit and send it out to you for future reference. Oh, uh, yeah. It has yeah. to be baggy in the wrong places, I think she said. Baggy in all the wrong places and we need to get you a sponsor like Rex Owner. You know? Oh, right, yes, yeah. Um, Charlie, you're you're on, you, you, I presume you are on a benefit, on a sickness benefit. No, um, I'm not. I... Um some wise financial planning has um, allowed me to not be. Good on you. Um, well, look, I really appreciate what you've done and many other people do. Um, I couldn't have done better myself, to be honest, because you just cut right to the chase. And I think as we've learned about you today, you're not going to sit there and say something that is pure speculation. You seem to me to be a pretty natural journalist in a lot of ways and documentary maker. And, Charlie, keep in touch, mate. Um, We'd love to run more of your stuff in the future. Okay, that's real nice. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Cheers. That is Charlie. Well, we'll call him Charlie McCoy, the real McCoy. Uh, if you go onto the platform in our uh, podcast section, uh, there's Charlie's work on the disinformation project, and I'm pretty sure they would. They would. They would label him an incel, and if Kerry Allen, Allen had his way, he'd probably be locked up for hate speech. It wasn't. Uh, Charlie's exercised free speech in the best possible way.